Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, 19 through 23. And we are going to look at some definitions of words as well. So to the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully. So what is that saying? Let's look up the word thankworthy. You know, don't get me wrong. There are some places where in the King James Version that I don't understand. And when I don't understand it, what I will do is look up words. So let's do it. Let's look up thank worthy. Worthy of thanks or gratitude. Meritorious. Okay. For this is thank worthy. Worthy of thanks or gratitude. Meritorious. For this is worth thanks, pretty much. If a man for conscience toward God, what does that mean? A person who serves God. A person who is following his rules and regulations. For it is worth thanks if a man who follows God endure grief. Maybe I should look up the word grief as well. But a grief is like... Let's look it up. Define grief. Deep sorrow, especially that caused by someone's death. So deep sorrow. Okay. For this is worthy of thanks if a man for conscience toward God, meaning you are following his rules and regulations, endure grief. So it is worthy of thanks for a person who serves God to go through grief. Suffering wrongly, verse 19. So verse 19 is pretty much saying that it is worthy of thanks if a person, not only a man, but one man as well. So it is worthy of thanks if a man who is following God to endure deep sorrow suffering wrongly and you may say Kevin this sounds crazy I don't know how that makes any sense okay let's continue verse 20 for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently but if when ye do well and suffer for it ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. So for what glory is it when ye be buffeted? What does buffeted mean? I know some of us may not know what it means. Buffeted. If you look right here where I have highlighted it at, let me see if, if I can highlight it. Let's make it yellow. There we go. Afflict or harm someone repeatedly or over a long period. Okay. 20. For what glory is it if ye, when ye be buffeted for your own faults? So what glory is it should I look up the word glory too? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Define glory. High renown or honor won by 
notable achievements. So let's say honor. Okay. So verse 20. For what honor is it if when you go through troubles or persecutions for your own faults? So if you get punished for doing what is wrong, like, of course you know that you have to take whatever you do wrong. Let's say I do something wrong and I get punished for it. Like, that is what is supposed to happen, right? Because I did something wrong. Like, I have to be patient because I did something wrong. Like, when you do something wrong, you know that a punishment is coming, usually. So when that happens, like, what credit can come to me by getting punished for me doing something wrong? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I am supposed to be punished, right? Because I did something wrong. Okay. Let's look up buffeted again. Okay. So, for what honor is it if when ye be buffeted, so pretty much persecuted for your faults, ye should take it patiently. Because when you do something wrong, of course, punishment is going to happen. So you pretty much have to take whatever comes to you in this context here. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, Ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. So there is honor when you are persecuted for doing well. There is honor when you are persecuted for teaching people about God. So if bad things happen to you because you are doing good, that is praiseworthy. That is honor unto you. Like God sees that as a good thing for you to suffer for his name's sake or for his name's sake. I pray that this makes sense. Because if you suffer for doing what is wrong, what good thing is that? Like, what honor is that? Because when you do something wrong, of course, <laughs> something bad is going to happen, right? You know, you will reap what you sow. But if you suffer for doing what is right, God sees that as a good thing. Like, hey, like, you did not do anything wrong, but still you are being punished as if you did something wrong. God sees that as an honorable thing, as a good thing. Okay. 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. So what this is pretty much saying, Jesus Christ came to earth and he suffered for us. He did not do any wrong, but he still suffered for us. And since he suffered for us, isn't it right for us to suffer for his name's sake, going around 
and teaching people and being persecuted for it. Going around doing good for people and being persecuted for it. Bad things happening to you for doing what God wants us to do. I pray that this makes sense. Okay. 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So what does guile mean? Guile. Let's look that thing up. Guile. Let me highlight it. <laughs> Let's make it orange. Okay. Deceit, craftiness. Okay. De Deceit. Okay, where are we at? I forget. Okay. 22. So, Jesus Christ did no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Okay. 23. Who, when he was reviled, what is reviled? Let's look it up. Reviled. Criticized in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. So, someone talking crazy to you talking trash to you, like messing with you. Okay. Who, when he was reviled, so when people was talking crazy to him, reviled not again. So when people was insulting him, he did not insult them. Let me see, 23, yes. So when people insulted him, he did not insult them. When he suffered, he threatened not. So when he was suffering, he did not threaten anyone. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Yes. So, as you may know or may not know, let me keep this simple because I don't want to go down another pathway than have to explain myself on that one. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, 23, so people was insulting him, talking crazy to him, and he did not do that back to him, back to those people. When he suffered, when he was persecuted and went through all of that crazy stuff, he did not threaten anyone, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. So this is saying Jesus Christ committed himself to God the Father that judges righteously. I pray that this makes sense. So pretty much what this whole thing is saying, like if you did not follow anything I was saying, <laughs> what this is saying, hey, when you live for God, when you follow his rules and regulations, you are going to have to suffer. Now, let me tell you this. Kev does not like to suffer. I don't. I believe it is terrible. But if you place things in context, we have to suffer. Jesus Christ came to earth and he had no sin. And he came to earth earth to help us but he was persecuted and done wrong to help us so if we go around and if we are real servants of God we are here yes we are here to serve God but by being a servant of God you are going to be a servant of people too or a servant to people 
in order to serve God, you have to serve people. In order to serve God, <laughs> you have to serve people. Oh, Kevin, that is crazy. I am not going to serve people. I am not saying that you have to do sinful things. If they tell you to do something sinful, I am not saying that you have to do it. But what I am trying to say, when you serve God, you have to be a servant of people as well. Because the Bible, everywhere, pretty much all over, all over the Bible, it is telling us that we have to help people. We have to do good unto people. If a person asks for help, we have to help them. We have to do things for people, so on and so on. So in order to serve God, we have to serve people as well. Which people don't like to serve. People like to be served, but people do not like to serve. I pray that this makes sense. The more that you are a servant unto people, let me say this right, <laughs> because I don't want anyone to say that I am saying the wrong thing. Jesus Christ came to earth. Yes, we have to follow his rules and regulations, but he came to earth as a servant to help us, right? So we have to help people too, right? We have to serve people. We have to do what it takes to get people to serve God. So we are a servant unto people as well. Whether you like hearing that or not, but it is true. And the closer you get to God, the more that you are going to see that you are a servant. <laughs> not only a servant to God, but a servant to people as well. I'm serious. <laughs> Because I see the things that I do for people and the closer I get to God, hey, I am a servant, <laughs> not only to God, but to people as well. Because the Bible, like I said, the Bible tells you whether you do it or not, the Bible tells you to do good to people. If they need help, help that person out. We are supposed to help the people that are in need in anything. So if you are helping or supposed to help a person in anything, what do you call that? A servant. I am serving you. <laughs> I pray that it makes sense. So we are supposed to be a servant unto people. Now, the people with pride and arrogance, I am not serving anyone. Okay. Well, you don't want to obey God then. So do what you do. God bless.